Hey guys, my name is Ren and I'm bad at art. The video that I have today is not actually the video that I thought I would be uploading today, but that's okay. I've had a pretty busy week. I know I said already that I am essential personnel and that I'm having a pretty busy time, but that is still the case. Still essential personnel, still really busy. Um, this week I am working only five days and not six, but we're going to kind of go with the flow, see how it's going. Um, and this is what I've got. I was planning on releasing this video next week and not this week, but some things happened and this is where we're at. If you didn't already notice, this video is not filmed in my normal setup. Uh, it is filmed in the same place that I filmed the video, not from last week, but from two weeks ago. I did do both of these paintings on that same day. Uh, I just thought that I would separate them because they're not related at all. I've been wanting to paint animals for a while. I have this thing about animals that I feel like I'm really, really bad at capturing them, but every single time I try, I get better. Crazy, right? Practice <laughs> makes progress. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Um, and not only do I get better every time I do it, I have a really fun time, and that's something that I'm not really willing to let myself not do, I guess. The animal that I chose to paint in this video here is a red panda. I think they are just super cute and shapely, and I thought that would be a good place to start. This is also the first time I've ever drawn a red panda. In addition to that, it is the first time that I've gone in and painted any animal using gouache. It is also the first time I've painted an animal using gouache with no line art. I've been experimenting a lot since that painting. This painting, <laughs> this one right here that you're watching, with painting animals and using line art and not using line art. And honestly, I just have fun no matter what, no matter how I'm doing it. I just think it's super fun. I think animals have this really interesting anatomy in a way that like so I'm used to drawing humans and animals are not shaped like humans not even the animals that are shaped like humans <laughs> I also just find that you run the risk much less often of hitting that uncanny valley type area with animals that like if you place something a little bit wrong on a human sometimes it can just be like ooh why does that human look like that? But you play something a little wrong on an animal and they're like, aw, look him paw. And that's fair. That's valid. <laughs> I did decide to keep this piece really, really simple. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, the biggest one probably being my inexperience with the subject and also the medium. But I think it turned out really, really well. It sort of captured the feeling that I wanted it to have, and I'm pretty excited about that. After finishing the panda itself, I decided that it looked a little bit plain, so I added in a little background. I wanted to try something a little bit more abstract. I wanted to do something completely abstract, just shapes that sort of represented the things that were surrounding the red panda here, but I really quickly realized that I had no idea how to do that, so I started by doing this little color chunk behind it. I really liked, first of all, that I already had that paint on my palette, so it was really easy to grab. <laughs> I am lazy. <laughs> um, but I also really liked the contrast that the blue color had with the pinks and reds within the red panda. I also decided that I would try a little bit to get sort of that abstract feeling without pushing myself too far. Um, not that I don't think it's important to push yourself and experiment and test your own boundaries, just that I already had been doing a lot of boundary testing 
in the piece already. Um, and I have a tendency to push too far and lose a lot of the things about a piece that I really, really like. And while I don't think that it's necessarily important to like every piece that you make, because learning is definitely more important, um, it can be super discouraging if you never let yourself make a piece that you do like. And that was something that I think I kind of needed. Um, I know I said already that in the video from before this piece that I had made, I couldn't really take a whole lot of creative um, credit for the piece that I had painted. I, I sort of inadvertently had copied someone else's art, which makes sense because it was the art that was made in the class that I took on figuring out sort of how to make these gouache floral illustrations. Um, but I was super, super disappointed with that and I felt like I deserved a win. And so I figured what's a better way to give myself a win than to not ruin the piece that I liked. <laughs> So in order to sort of hit that mid-ground between too abstract and not abstract enough, I did a color block behind the animal and then I decided to add some leaves. And in order to keep those from getting too non-abstract, too realistic, I'm trying to keep them sort of stylized because these leaves were in the reference photo that I used. I decided to try to make them more like floaty-ish. I also decided not to use a green for them. Using that yellow ochre color, which if you've watched any of my other videos, you know how much I love yellow ochre. <laughs> um, it kept it from being too much like real. It helped me stylize them. It kept me from being like, okay, leaves are green and leaves look like this and this is what the photo looks like and this is how I do that and this is what I normally do. And it kept me really free and willing to experiment, which was something that, like I said, was very, very important to me here. So that worked out really, really well in my favor. After I got all of the color blocked in for the leaves, I grabbed my white pen and I added a little bit of a glint to the eye. I felt like that added a lot of dimension to the face on the panda. I noticed now that I said dimension weird, but I'm gonna leave it in because that's authentic. <laughs> um, I also added some whiskers and it actually did not work as well as I thought that it would. I kind of thought that because of the texture that the gouache had after it dried, which was a little chalky. My paints are not very good quality, so they were a little chalky, but just that matte finish with a little bit of a rough texture, I thought that would really grab the ink from the gel pen. I was wrong. Not the case. Um, it was a little bit difficult to control, but it did end up doing the purpose that I intended it to, to have. And after that, of course, I grabbed my trusty Sharpie pen. My love, my favorite thing. It is honestly one of my favorite and most consistently used art supplies right now. I'm sure eventually I will move on to something bigger and better, perhaps something that I know for a fact is waterproof. Maybe one of those fancy microns. Um, but for now, what I have is my fine Sharpie pen. I added, I was just going to add lines to the center of the hollow leaves that I had left to try to give a little bit more of like a texture to them. But I ended up outlining all of them and adding a couple more with no color and just the outline. And honestly, it looks so good. I am very aware of the fact that I say this in every single video, but I am so happy with what I was able to achieve. I feel like this piece gave me a much better understanding of gouache and how I like to use it. And that's really cool. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble and whatnot. I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.